Andre rescued an abandoned puppy, he couldn't have predicted at the time that just a few months later he would realize that it wasn't a dog and that he would have to change his whole life in order to keep it. Andre Muzenko was loading shopping bags into his car when he noticed what caught his eye on a lorry next to his car. At the back of the wagon was a small cage with a tiny little dog in it. The dog looked so sad and depressed that it touched Andre's heart instantly. But the puppy was also beautiful, it had the fluffiest fur Andre had ever seen and sweet eyes that made him fall in love with it immediately. When the owner of the truck returned, Andre stayed to chat with him, asking about the puppy and where he got it. But the man wasn't talking good things, the dog had been abandoned near his farm, and he explained that he and the farm workers had been getting rid of the dog, but it wouldn't leave. They have a big road next to their farm where people often leave unwanted animals. They can't keep all the animals, but they still try to find good homes for them. But this poor little dog made the farmer angry, it must have been hungry because there was no family to take care of it. To be fair, it looked like it should still be drinking its mum's milk. It followed the smell of food and entered the coop, destroying a flock of chickens, some of which also died from the shock of the invasion. The poor farmer had limited resources and the loss was agonizing. He wanted to let the puppy go, but he couldn't lay his hands on it. Instead, he decided to take it to the vet and ask if he could euthanize the dog cheaper. This brought tears to Andre's eyes, and he couldn't bear the thought of this puppy being euthanized simply because he was lonely and hungry. He was just doing what comes naturally in an animal's nature, which is to try to survive. He had to take some action, so we offered to take the puppy and were even willing to pay so the farmer could replace some of the lost ones with new animals. In return he would get a nice puppy in some much needed companionship, a win-win situation. The farmer agreed as long as he never saw the dog on his land again. Andre hugged the puppy tightly, his entire body relaxing. The sweet boy must have been so scared, and he was grateful that he had shown up in time to save him. Now he just had to figure out what to do with the puppy, he had no plans to get a dog at that time. He lived in a flat with no garden, but eventually he managed to make enough room in his house for the puppy to play. He named the dog Akira and an instant bond was created between them. Andre isn't sure if it's because Akira knows he saved him or because they have a connection that transcends everything he's ever experienced, but either way, it never occurred to him that a dog could actually be his best friend. They have a lot of fun together, but Andre also has to make sure that Akira gets enough exercise or he might get frustrated or even slightly disruptive. He likes to steal other people's hats and sweatshirts, but is never gentle with them. He'll chew on hats and just lie down and snooze on his sweatshirt. Despite Akira's energy and playfulness, Andre anticipated that training and controlling him on walks would be difficult, but the pup was surprisingly very relaxed and obedient. He willingly works at Andre's pace and explores the surrounding forest until he sees other dogs, then he absolutely loses his mind. He wanted to play with every dog he met, even the ones that had no interest in being his friend. It's heartwarming, and people will always praise Andre's puppy character. Akira is an exceptionally talented dog, but has one little problem that is difficult to deal with, he just keeps growing up. Over time he became huge, his black coat became fluffier and he grew into a beautiful adult dog. Most of the people were afraid of him, and their reaction made Andre start to worry about the dog's huge size. He tried to convince himself that this was normal for a wolf dog, but he had to admit he was a little worried, what if the dog had some sort of hormonal imbalance that caused him to grow like this? He's afraid of what he'll hear from the vet, but he has to figure out what's wrong with his best friend. He hopes everything is okay and the dog is just really big, but that's not what the doctor tells him. He took Ella to the vet clinic and brought her inside. The nurse took one look at the animal, let out a small scream, and demanded that he move to another room, certain that Isla would hurt the other animals, or even the people around her. Andre knew better, but at this stage, Akira was only a few months old, but he was already bigger than most dogs of the giant breed. It was funny how people reacted whenever he tried to make friends with the puppy. Andre had to admit that he didn't know Akira completely. He had been convinced that his puppy was the product of two purebred wolfhounds, 
but in a few months he would find out that his sweet companion was not a dog at all. As he entered, the vet smiled when he saw Akira sitting behind Andre, his massive head resting on his shoulder. The big boy did love humans. The good news was that Akira was very healthy and had no problems at all. The other news is that the dog is a wolf, specifically an all-Canadian black wolf with no dogs in the family tree. Why and how he was abandoned next to the farmer's field is a mystery. His pack may have left him behind for some reason, or someone may have tried to bring the wolfhound home, only to realize their mistake halfway through. Either way, his fate intersects with Andres, who has been raising him to be his sweet pup for months. He was shocked, a euphemism for the fact that Akira had never shown signs of aggression, and other than preferring meat to dry dog food, he had never suspected that he wasn't an ordinary dog. Although he was domesticated, he would never survive in the wild if Andre released him now. At the same time, he can't keep treating this wolf like a dog, which isn't exactly bad news, but it would change their lives. The vet tells Andre that he'll have to contact the local wildlife authorities, and he's not sure what they'll decide about the situation. Andre lived in a residential house in the city, which wasn't exactly appropriate housing for any wolf, and even less so for a big wolf like Akira. He lived in someone's backyard, walking amongst the crowds and playing with pets and children several times his size. If he wanted to be with his best friend, Andre had to make some changes in his lifestyle. In a few days, a local wildlife inspector comes to visit them and he will decide whether to confiscate the wolf or allow Andre to keep him. Once he sees them together, he can't deny the amazing bond between the man and the wolf, so he decides he doesn't want to break it, as long as he can help them stay together. The first order of business is to get the wolf out of the city limits, having a wild animal in town like that is unacceptable. Andre sold the house, took out all the equity in savings, and bought a small piece of land more suitable for a wolf. The inspector had never encountered such a situation before, so he was just coping as best he could, most laws in Russia prohibit ordinary people from keeping wild animals, and he explained that Andre had to do his best to take care of his wolf. Most people would probably give up, but Andre loved this wolf like his own child, and he was willing to do whatever it took to keep him. Just imagining Akira being sent to a shelter or another home, never to receive an intimate touch again, made his blood seem to freeze. The separation from this human would be heartbreaking for this wolf who loved this human too much to keep them apart, and for Andre himself. The new land gives Akira lots of opportunities to run and play, but he needs a paddock that will ensure the safety of those around him. Andre had to have everything ready and up to standard because there was a huge obstacle to overcome before he could relax, he had to register as an animal rescue specialist to be able to keep the wild animal. In order to do this, he had to prove that he had everything that a wild animal might need. So much has changed in a short period of time that Andre wanted to share it with all of his friends and family and gradually broke the news to the public by starting to post videos on social media about his little wolf dog and the big boy who has grown up. People are shocked and they find out that Akira is a wolf, but what really shocks everyone is the bond between man and beast. It was incredible to see how close they were. The wolf acted like a playful puppy, trying to nip at Andre's ears and the brim of his dress hat but despite its size and sharp canines, it didn't hurt him at all. It was very mobile, but once Andre reprimanded it, it relaxed. It was amazing to watch. Unfortunately, the social media post had some unintended side effects and his story quickly went viral as his family shared the adorable video on their own channel and then everything went crazy. Some thought he made a huge mistake in adopting the animal from a random farmer, Others wondered why he never suspected that Akira might not be a dog, and still others thought he was doing Akira an injustice by keeping him. But fortunately, most of the comments have come from open-minded people who understand that Andre is only looking out for Akira's best interests. These people were intrigued by the handsome man and his amazing wolf, and they wanted to see what the two creatures were up to on a daily basis, and his following grew dramatically in just a few weeks. But Andre doesn't care about any of that he has to focus on getting the place ready for the inspection. He spent all his money to prepare the sleeping paddock for the wolf, budgeting for the most important things. Unfortunately, 
the inspector doesn't think that the paddock is the most suitable place for him, and according to him, Akira needs more space to feel comfortable. Andre planned to let him walk and play outside all the time, as he had always done before, but it didn't matter to the inspector, he needed to fit within certain parameters and there was no room for discussion. It was one or the other and he warned Andre that he only had a few weeks left to make changes or they would have to take Akira away. The inspector was saddened because he could see the bond between the two, but there was nothing he could do about it, the animal needed to have all its needs met or he couldn't grant Andre a license for the sanctuary. In reality, he should have taken the wolf right then and there but he was rooting for them and wanted them to get the job done. His warning was a lifeline, but it didn't feel that way to Andre, it felt like the end of the world to him. He never got another chance to finish everything, he had spent all his savings buying this property and developing it to its current stage. At this point, he was still working his day job in the city, but that was never enough to get everything he needed to upgrade. He had to come to terms with the fact that he would have to say goodbye to Akira, and hoping to make it as easy as possible for the wolf to accept, he began to cut down on his contact with him, but it just broke both of their hearts. Akira became frustrated that his friend was no longer hanging out with him. Andre didn't know what to do, the wolf was so dependent on him that it was doubtful he would even survive if they took him away from the only family he knew. He didn't know and had been feeling sick about all the bad things that could happen. However, something incredible happened that changed everything. One of his friends commented on his post telling everyone about the struggles he was facing and people rallied to help him. Everyone wanted to know where they could contribute to building things, and faster than Andre could have imagined, he had enough money to change everything and make everything fit his needs. Later. He discovers that even the inspectors have contributed to the cause. When he returned to the farm to check on progress, he was overjoyed to see that everything was up to standard and he has never been happier to give good news to others. Andre will be able to spend the rest of his life with his wolf and the young man rejoiced as his online supporters cheered with him. Andre once again made sure to spend a lot of time with Akira, building trust between them. Knowing that he had all the right paperwork to take care of his mate made him feel a lot more relaxed and he was finally able to focus on proper training. But he wasn't going to stop there, it was great that he was able to give Akila a home, but more importantly, his relationship with this wolf only fueled his desire to do more. There are many other animals in need and Andre is now empowered to give them a good home, he just needs the resources to do so. Seeing how invested people were in Akira helped cement the realization that many people want to help animals but they don't always have the skills or time to do so, but they are still willing to help those who can. So Andre started making some Akira merchandise and selling it online, he also had many people who wanted to contribute to the care of wolves and other animals and he gladly accepted their offers. But that's not all that is known about his gift with animals. He was always the first one to get the call whenever word got out about a wolf or wolf hybrid in need of help, and Andre couldn't say no to any animal in need. As an added bonus, Akira was able to make friends that he could play with, not exactly friends his own size, as most wolves were smaller than him, but at least those that he could play with without getting hurt. But he's not just limited to the company of wolves either, any animal in need is taken care of at his sanctuary. For example, he recently posted videos of the newest members of his family, a couple of wild boars who enjoy belly rubs. This man has an incredible talent for bonding with animals of all kinds, and the day he found that puppy on a crate was the day he found his true calling. He has changed many lives so far and seems to have no plans to stop. His big dream was to build large homes for all the animals in his care, with Akira at the forefront, and that's exactly what he's working towards at the moment. He wants to give this wolf a chance to be as close to the wild as possible, but within the safety of the sanctuary. Being a massive animal who loves head strokes, he will never be able to live on his own, but Andre hopes to one day give him second best. But until he is able to make that happen, he remains wholeheartedly committed to giving the animals in their care and the love they deserve. Their lives may have changed drastically from when they lived in the city when they thought Akira was a dog but people and animals are still loyal to each other and that will never change. What a beautiful story. 
Would you have continued to keep Akira if you had found out his true origins? Would you give up your entire life to open a wildlife sanctuary? Let us know in the comments, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more incredible stories. What's going on? If it's your first time here and you want to find out new facts, make sure to subscribe and active the notifications bell, so you don't miss anything. These stories will definitely make you smarter. Many animals who have been humiliated avenge themselves, including apes, Mexican elephants, killer whales, dolphins and oriental magpies. This is a true story I have read. The author is John William. This story is about a lynx shot and injured. Four years ago, I went back to my village. I was not tried after walking 2000 kilometers because I was eager to see the place where I grew up. Many animals can identify those people who will hurt them so they can defend themselves in time. They are still young and haven't ever been attacked. Some animals can recognize the potential intentions of other animals, such as predators who can kill themselves. They are in their prime so they have a chance to appear on the African prairie. Lions and spotted hyenas have the ability to kill each other's cubs. They can found a lonely lion in a group of spotted hyenas. Similarly, lions try to steal their prey. This is a matter of life. The lions will roar when they try to stop lions from hunting. The male lion will help the lion when he hears the commotion and then becomes the main hunter. They would immediately capture a hyena and kill it in a way of revenge. The hyenas also kill wounded or old lions, even if those lions are no threat to them. These lions pose a threat to their hunting. They will kill these lions in a vengeful way although it wastes time and energy. It is not a perfect method. This is consistent with humans' behaviors, including revenge. This behavior manifests itself in animals with more advanced brain functions. When I was 200 kilometers away from my village, I saw an old man standing on the side of the road and asked me to stop. Then I turned off the music, pulled over and told him to get in the car. After he got into the car, he asked me where I was going. I told him the name of my village. He smiled and told me he was going to the village next to mine. We introduced ourselves to each other and started talking. At first he didn't say anything. He just listened to me and had to talk something. He smiled at me when I told him the story of me and my wife named Lucy. He said his wife's name was Lucy too. The man was silent for a while and told me he had lived a miserable life. He said with great interest that he and Lucy had been together since childhood. Their neighbors and spent most of their time together. They went to study together and played in the yard in front of their house at night. During the holidays, they went to the forest to pick mushrooms and fruits. They're always together. They're very harmonious and get along very well. It attracted people's attention. Some thought they would definitely get married and move on with their lives. After Lucy and Michael grew up, they became a young couple. They cared a lot about their love and relationship. Finally they started trying to get married. However, Michael had to join the army as soon as possible and it's his obligation. He had to leave his hometown. He promised Lucy that he would come back and marry her. Michael kept in touch with Lucy in the military. He often sent her letters and presents. His wife kept asking how he was doing. The distance between them is too far. Michael's barracks is about 1,500,000 kilometers from the village. A year later, he didn't hear from Lucy and their connection ended entirely. She's no longer in contact with Michael but Michael continued to message her. He desperately wanted to connect with her but failed. He wondered why this young woman disappeared in this way. He tried to contact his relatives and get news about her. After several months, Michael waited for Lucy until Lucy's mother sent him a letter. She told Michael that Lucy married Valerie, Michael's friend. Michael was shocked after reading this letter. He didn't expect his girlfriend to have an affair with his friend. After being shocked, Michael began to cry over what had happened to him. From then on, he no longer trusted anyone. He no longer believed in love and no longer married. He would live alone because he has lost faith in everyone. 
When Michael finished his military service, he didn't return to the village where he grew up because he no longer wanted to meet his relatives. He moved to a village in the north and built a hut in a small village. He had a big beard and long hair so his face was almost covered. He started a new life. Luckily, Michael worked in a railway company for a short time and earned 10 years salary. He lived alone there and tried to avoid contact with people because he didn't cut his beard and hair. He had nowhere to go. His appearance led some to think he was mentally ill. Then he moved to another village 20 kilometers away. He bought a small house in that village and lived there. Michael spent most of his time wandering in the woods and at the same time, he was looking for something. While wandering in the forest, he met a ranger. They talked for a while and Michael told him that he was looking for a job. That guy offered him a job as a ranger because one of his colleagues retired in those days. Eventually Michael found a job. He spent most of his time in the woods. It's what he's been looking for for years. Michael's life is getting better as he meets animals in the wild and he has a lot of fun with them. He often goes to the house his parents left him. He grew up there, but he didn't want to meet anyone, especially Lucy. She betrayed him, as well as Valerie. That's why he always goes to the village early in the morning. After returning home, Michael hears that Valerie lives with Lucy and that they have a son. But their relationship is strained. He doesn't care about that because he just wants to take care of animals in the forest, sit with them and help them when they need it. It's the only thing that makes him feel like he's a positive and useful person in this world. Michael found dead animals in the forest and he decided to find the perpetrators. He asked some hunters in the village and was told that a hunter from a neighboring village mercilessly killed all the animals he found. He threatened that he would shoot anyone who stood in his way. Michael continued to investigate. He discovered that this evil hunter was Valerie, his former friend. Valerie took away his lover. Michael was confused because he didn't want to be recognized by Valerie. He wants his brutality to end. One day, Michael heard gunshots in the forest. When he got there, he found Valerie with a gun on his back and quickly left. Michael realized that the evil man killed another animal, so he continued his search. Michael sighed when he found them. He realized that if he didn't help these little animals, they would die. He buried their mother, took them in his arms and took them to his house to take care of them. The man sat with three long-legged animals and fed them. He kept touching them and felt that he was their mother. They need him. He decided not to abandon them until they could take care of themselves. Three animals stayed at Michael's house for two months. Michael took care of them and provided them with everything they need, which made them attached to him and thought of them as domestic animals. Three cats are attached to Michael. They played with Michael. Three bobcats had grown up. They could run and jump. He took them to the forest, put them there and hoped they would live a good life. One year later, a letter from the head of the forest office was sent to Michael. They asked Michael to guard the forest and find the killer. Michael was overwhelmed because he would have to meet Valerie who killed those animals. One day, Valerie came out of the woods as usual. He filled the basket with fruits and mushrooms. On his way back, a huge shadow blocked his way. When he tried to shoot that animal, it jumped at him. So he shot. Valerie threw the basket on the ground and escaped, but he found two shadows waiting for him here. They attacked him. When Michael came to the forest as usual, he found Valerie lying on the ground. He approached and called an ambulance. Michael prayed for him and left him on the ground. He bled profusely. Michael tried to pick him up, took him out of the forest, and put him on the road. But Valerie died on the way. Michael discovered that Lucy's mother and Valerie had been misleading him. Lucy's mother sent him a letter and told him that Lucy had married another man. Actually she lied to him. She sent another letter to Michael. She told her daughter that Michael had met another young woman and married her. After crying for many days, Lucy decided not to send Michael any more letters. 
In the end, Lucy married Valerie because Valerie wanted to marry her after Michael went to join the army. Even so, it never occurred to Michael to marry Lucy after the deaths of Valerie and her mother. He decided to move on with his life, serving wild animals, protecting them and helping them. Now Michael is old. After he finished speaking, I looked at him with respectful eyes. I want to give him a hug. I asked him about Lucy. He told me that she lives in the village where I live and that he's teaching her son how to love and respect wild animals. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and share this video. We will reply you as soon as possible. Everything has spirit. A lynx meets a boy for the first time, but it keeps nudging him, why did it do this and what exactly happened, there is a very interesting news recently that there was a man named George Claus that he's an animal rescuer and one day he comes home from get off work. On the way, he suddenly heard a cat meowing from the yard when he looked to the source of the sound, he found that it was a poor lynx that I in primeval forests, lynxes often move in the depths of dense forests they hardly leave the forest when in danger, they climb to the trees to hide, lynx looks very special. Other cats have big and long tails. Lynx with short tail. The end of its tail is black. It has two tufts of black hair on its ears and a long hair like a goatee on its chin. The lynx has long, dense, light taupe hair and spots. It is stout and long limbed. The soles of the feet are covered with thick hair that looks shaggy and thick. It makes no sound when it walks, and this lynx is different. It whimpered as if calling for help, most passers-by won't care about this. Some people are watching, only George Claus stopped to go home and walk towards the lynx that he found out that the lynx was not doing well. George Claus won't turn a blind eye that he wants to help the lynx but I didn't expect this. Lynx to be very vigilant that at first, the lynx thought that the man was trying to harm it. Seeing him approaching, the lynx hissed that it is warning the humans on the opposite side not to come over, although unable to move, the lynx still desperately wants to save itself but after a while, the lynx suddenly stopped struggling that IT found that the man was helping it, the lynx lies quietly on the ground, waiting for the man's rescue, his job is to save animals, after reassurance. Lynx finally let George Claus take it away after confirming its safety, after the kind George Claus took it back to them room, he gave it a simple disinfection of the wound that he is going to keep it for a few days until it's healed, although the lynx was very aggressive during this period, George Claus fears it will break the bottles in the house, this will hurt the lynx again. So he has been following the lynx to clean up. I in this way, he can prevent some dangers from happening in time, lynx looks very impatient. After playing in the living room for a while, it went to the bedroom to make trouble and it doesn't seem to. Like humans following it all the time so it always avoids George Claus. There is still a hissing sound from its mouth, time is not only a good medicine to heal wounds, but also a tool to distinguish sincerity. When the lynx got used to the presence of the man, its behavior restrained, George Claus also found the lynx fully recovered. It can continue to live freely in the wild. So George Claus sent the rambunctious little guy out into the wild the next day, however. When the lynx regained its freedom, its behavior is surprising, rescued lynx changed from fierce look in the past that IT ran to the place where George Claus put his backpack and lay down quietly that IT stared at George intently, as if thanking him, finally, the lynx left. But George Claus could see the little guy sneaking a glance back in the meantime, George Claus thought their bond would end there, this is the last time he saw this lynx but after many years. They met in another way. At that time, the lynx came to the familiar house again. That it rescued the son of George Claus from an accident. George Claus thanks a lot for it. After George Claus saved the lynx, this lynx never forgot its lifesaver. Maybe smell something similar to the benefactor on this child, and it saved George Claus's baby. By the way, that so when first meeting George Claus's son, lynx was very enthusiastic about him and changed its previous attitude of not being close to strangers. The lynx hugged the boy and did not let go. It buried its head in the boy's neck and rubbed it vigorously. It's like a big sticky cat that when the boy tried to stay away, the lynx didn't want to let him go. In desperation, the boy had no choice but to let it act like a baby, this behavior is said to be the animal marking its territory, once infected with its scent. It is difficult for other dangerous animals to approach. All is meant to be e. It is also a kind of fate that George Claus and Lynx can meet again, everyone says felines are 
Smart, indeed, George Claus didn't expect this lynx to be so spiritual, the lynx is very spiritual, but it is not as dangerous and ferocious as other animals, from the appearance, you may think that the ferocity of wolves will be higher than that that it's not like that that I and the carnivorous world, there is an animal that does not catch simple herbivores. They hunt the more dangerous wolves that this is lynx, compared to other cats or canines living in the wild, the lynx is small that it has been misunderstood by humans that their abilities are far inferior to those of jackals, tigers and leopards, but actually, the lynx has a lot of grit and determination, its ability is no less than that of other carnivorous animals. Some say they are miniature versions of the king of beasts according to the common phenomenon observed in nature, tigers and lions can be kings. In the animal kingdom, few animals can stand against them, wolves are ferocious generals, they like to hang out in groups and are representatives of strength, the common point of these two types of animals is that they are relatively large in size and have a greater advantage in hunting, compared with it, the lynx is short in stature, from this point of view alone that if there is a duel, the lynx does not have any advantage. Humans have always believed that animals such as lynxes would be suppressed by wolves, their life in the wild can be tough, however, after observational studies, people find reality really shocking, this situation does not seem to be the case in traditional cognition that even the other way around. Can you believe it? A lynx so small can beat a wolf, surprisingly able to suppress the ferocious wolf. They found rare instances of wolves harming Eurasian lynx. And the lynx hunts wolves a l o t that i n nature. Many animals live in the same area that it's not uncommon for animals' habitats to overlap. This includes wolves and lynxes. From our perspectives, it is very normal for carnivores to hunt other animals, and in the area where wolves and lynx live together, it is also common for lynxes to hunt wolves. As a carnivore, the main food of wolves and lynxes are herbivorous animals such as rabbits, deer, or wild boars. They run into situations where there isn't enough prey. Although there will be no direct conflict between carnivores. If the wolves encounter the cubs of other animals, they will not show mercy, the physical condition of the lynx is relatively excellent, but the aggression and other abilities of their pups are totally defenseless, therefore, there is a survival competition between wolves and lynxes. That I in short, lynxes are very smart. They don't like the group life of humans, but some people still hunt them wantonly, let them lose their free life in them. Wild, many cases have proved that I in front of nature, human beings must learn to respect. Do not wantonly trample on and interfere violently, let alone boldly seek changes, otherwise, humans will be punished by nature. That we must clearly realize the importance of harmony between man and nature. To protect biodiversity is to protect human beings. To protect wild animals is to protect ourselves.